Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I'd just like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth, the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. And I will have links below this video to their sites. Yeah, Rabbi Shalom Arush, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mazrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Alon Anavar, Rabbi Yuval Ovadia, Rabbi Daniel Asher, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobek, Jews for Judaism, Rabbi David Ashir, and Rabbi Yaron Ruvain. As well, if you never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for the Soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this one is related to the upcoming parasha, parasha Vayera, and uh, specifically about the Akedah, and I call this one self-sacrifice, and you'll understand as it goes along. So, this is again taken from the weekly parasha Insights from Rabbi Eli Mansur. So the final section of parasha Vayera tells the story of Akedah Yitzchak, where Hashem commanded Avram Avim to sacrifice his son Yitzchak. Just as Avram lifted the knife and prepared to slaughter his son, an angel called out to him and told him to desist. Hashem promised Avram that he and his descendants would receive great reward for this extraordinary act of devotion and subservience. So when Hashem issues the command to Avram, he tells him to sacrifice et bincha et yechidcha, literally, your son, your only one. The chida, Rav Chaim Yosif David Azulai, offers a novel interpretation of this phrase, one which sheds an entirely new and fascinating light on the story of Akedah Yitzchak. The word yachid, the chida writes, is often used in reference to the human soul. If so, then Hashem command to Avram to sacrifice Yechida, your soul, must mean that he was to sacrifice not only Yitzhak, but also himself. Because he said Yechidcha, right? So that's interesting. I mean, to sacrifice Yechidcha, your soul. Oh, sorry. Um, so Avram was told to sacrifice both his son and himself to give his own life for the sake of Hashem. So the Chida pr- proceeds to explain that a technical halachic dilemma prevented Avram from sacrificing the second aspect, I'm sorry, from fulfilling this second aspect of Hashem's command. The process of offering a sacrifice includes the, sla- includes the slaughtering and then placing of the sacrifice on the altar to Hashem. If Avram had been slaughtered as a sacrifice, Yitzchak son would have then been unable to continue with the latter stages of the process, as he would have the status of Onain, which somebody whose family member has just passed away. So a Kohen who is an Onain is prohibited from performing the service in the Beit HaMikdash. And so Yitzchak would not have been allowed to perform any part of the sacrifice once his father was slaughtered. So Avram, however, as the Midrash and Bracious Rabbah teaches, had the status of a Kohen Gadol, so who is permitted to offer sacrifices even as an Onain. Therefore, Avram was able to sacrifice Yitzchak and then continue with the latter stages of the process. Even after becoming an Onain with the death of his son, Avram would be allowed to continue tending to the sacrifice given his status as a Kohen Gadol. And so although Avram and Yitzchak very much wished to fulfill both of Hashem's commands, pr- practically they were capable of fulfilling only the command that Yitzchak should be sacrificed. So the Chida adds that this explains why Hashem promised Avram that in, in reward for his act, Berach, Barech, Avarechacha, I will assuredly bless you. So it's a double expression which implies that Avram received two blessings in reward for the Akeda. The Chida explains that since Avram f- fully intended to sacrifice himself as well, uh, as, and not only his uh, son, he was rewarded with two great blessings. One for Akeda Yitzchak, his willingness to sacrifice his son, and what we might call Akeda Avraham, is willingness to sacrifice his own life. So what we learn from here is this insight uh, brings into focus the full extent of Avram's sense of absolute, unconditional subservience to Hashem, how his love for the Almighty knew no bounds, and how committed he was to fulfill every command of Hashem, fully trusting without any doubt or uncertainty that this is the greatest thing any human being can do. While we are not ever called upon to make these kind of unfathomable sacrifices for the sake of Hashem, our patriarchs Unequivocal subservience should inspire us with faith and devotion and serve as a model of commitment to Hashem's laws, even when this entails a degree of hardship and sacrifice. So yes, we can learn a lot about, so I say self-sacrifice. So he was willing to do anything and everything. He, there was nothing that uh, Avram Avinu would, wouldn't do for Hashem. So he even giving up his son. So we can learn a lot from them how we also need to realize that making sacrifices, of course, in L'Shem Shemayim for the sake of heaven is the best way to live. And, and, and I hope that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Amen, and thanks for watching.